In a previous video, we talked about CAMP, which is Clipper Adaptive Meshing and Purging. This is a utility that looks at the exclude object information in your print to only mesh the part of your bed that's used in this individual plate, as well as doing an adaptive purge, which will move your purge closer to your print area. Since we did that video, there has been a pretty massive rewrite. Uh, this update changes how it's installed as well as how it's configured and adds in a new feature, which is Smart Park, which is really interesting. So I thought we would take a minute and just take a look at the changes. So looking at the GitHub page, you can see that we have all the information on what it's going to do, including a little graphic showing rather than meshing the entire bed, it's only meshing the print area. By doing this, you get a more dense mesh, which gives your printer more information about the bed, specifically where you are going to be printing. We talked about most of these features in the previous video, so I won't go over everything here, but your requirements are still, you have to have exclude object defined, which is how CAMP gets the placement of the objects on the bed. And when we get to installation, you can see that this is a little different. We're actually cloning this from the Git repository. So we're going to clone the code from the Git repo. Then we're creating some symbolic links and copying the new configuration file to your printer data. One big difference is that rather than meshing and purging being separate configuration files, there's now one configuration file for the entire camp suite. If you previously installed CAMP, you will need to remove the includes in your printer config file that point to those older adaptive mesh and adaptive purge files. But you might want to hold on to those so that you can copy the values and put them into the new config file. The next step is that we're going to add an update entry into the Moonraker config file so that Moonraker will automatically let you know if there's been an update to the camp code and allow you to do the update directly from there. Once the installation is done, we can set up the new includes and configure everything. So I'm going to jump over to my printer's main sale page. You can see here in the printer config, we need to include the camp settings.cfg file. This is the one configuration file that will set up all of the camp features. So I will close out of here and go to camp settings. So here at the top are the individual includes for the camp features. Uh, I have uncommented the adaptive meshing, Voron Purge, and Smart Park. You only have to uncomment the features that you want to use. So for example, if you were not using a Voron printer and you don't want to use the Voron Purge, you could just leave that commented and then uncomment the line purge, which would just do a simple line purge rather than the Voron logo. One thing to keep in mind is that these comments do have a space after them. So if you're uncommenting something, make sure to also uncomment the space. If you don't, this will lead to problems. Ask me how I know. So now with the features uncommented to make sure that they will be active, let's take a look at the rest of the configuration. Verbose logging is set to true, which enables more data to be logged just in case there's a problem. Then we get into the adaptive mesh settings. There's the variable mesh margin uh, about expanding the mesh. The fuzz amount allows you to randomize the probing points, which is good if you're using a contact probe like TAP and tend to run the same prints or the same plates over and over. This fuzzing will actually move the probing point a little bit so that you're not constantly probing the bed in exactly the same spot which should alleviate any problems with wear on your build surface then we have the docking settings so if you're using a euclid or a clicky or any other dockable probe you can put in your scripts that call the attach and detach for that then we get into the adaptive purge settings 
which set your height and the distance between the filament and the nozzle, uh, which helps fine tune the amount of extrusion you're going to need to do the purge. And then the other settings for your purge, which you'll have to tune based on the amount of flow and your overall extruder system. And then finally, the new Smart Park feature where you can set the height off the plate once Smart Park is enabled. Smart Park is a new feature which allows the system to intelligently park your tool head over the build plate in a position where it is close to where you need to print. On my Micron, I would go to the front left corner to park the tool head before I did my final heat. Now, by using Smart Park, I can just have that park wherever it needs to be before I heat up the tool head and do my purge. And I can show you, that's very simple. You just go into your print start macro. And right before you get to the final heat, which in my system is called final heat, you can see that I have the smart park command and then I set the status, send out a little message so that I know that I'm waiting for the hot end. And you can see that the last part of my print start config is a Voron purge. I'm going to go ahead and run a print so I can show you how all of this works. And we'll be back once my printer is preheated and done a quad gantry level. Okay, so quad gantry level is done. Next up is bed mesh. This is a small print, so you'll be able to see that it's doing a selective mesh. Then we will see the smart park and purge. So now it's parked not quite at the bottom corner. It's intelligently found the spot where it should park, close to where the print will begin. Once the hot end is fully at temperature, then it'll do the smart purge and begin printing. And there you have it. That's the updated Clipper Adaptive Meshing and Purging, now with Smart Park. It's a much better put together system. It's more cohesive as a suite rather than individual things. We have the ability to have Moonraker let us know if there are updates to make sure we're always up to date. And the Smart Park is really cool because now you have less opportunities for filament that's drooling from your nozzle once it's heated to be drug across your print area. So hope this is helpful. Uh, big thanks to Kyle Lissa and the rest of the team that have put this together. And we'll be bringing you more interesting software stuff soon.